This video was sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is one of the top VPNs you can use. With one subscription, you can install and run Surfshark on any number of devices in your home at the same time. Yup, that's right, unlimited privacy and protection on any of your devices. Everything from your phone, to your PlayStation, and of course your PC. Listen, don't get scammed by any of the other VPNs claiming to be free. Nothing is free, especially privacy. But with Surfshark, you're protected with all RAM servers. Meaning if someone comes to pull your data, all the information goes bye-bye. And that's not all either. You ever get a notice on a YouTube video that says restricted in your country? That's called being region locked. It applies to Netflix, Disney Plus, and Hulu too. With Surfshark, you can enjoy all your favorite shows and more with just the click of a button. And best of all, it's practically free. That's right, I got a promo code for you today. And if you go to surfshark.deal slash plagued and enter code plagued, you're going to get an extra 83% off and four months free. So what do you got to lose? Nothing, because it's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So try Surfshark for free today. Enter code PLAGUED at checkout at surfshark.deal slash plagued and get even more free time with the best VPN available. Have fun online, but stay safe, because the world's a scary place, as you and I both know. And that's why I trust Surfshark. and welcome to the Not Safe for Life Iceberg. That's not the right fucking title. Hello everyone and welcome to the ultimate Not Safe for Life Iceberg. An iceberg that consists of only verified and real media and to my own knowledge is, well, the most disturbing shit out there. I'm your host Plague Moth, if you didn't know already, I host the most controversial commentary on YouTube. Find me someone more controversial, I mean let's go dude. But with all that mumbo jumbo being said, there are a few things I need to get out of the way first before we get into tier one, all right? First and foremost, since you probably didn't read the disclaimers at the beginning, none of the material used, viewed, or downloaded, or anything in the making of this iceberg was illegal. Any illegal topics that you may find or that are discussed have been done with proper homework and reading, not by viewing, trading, or anything involving illicit materials. And one more thing too, since I don't have to shove it down your throat the whole video, please consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash plagued. That's where you can find all my extra content as well as the infamous four docuseries. If you're watching on Patreon, I mean, sorry for a little ad, you know I always do that though. Um, I don't make money off YouTube. I've never earned a penny off YouTube, so those ads you see are not my choice. It's literally what it is. And yeah, I mean, Patreon's my income. That's why I plug it. Simple as that. Get extra moth content, right? <clears throat> that means for this entire iceberg, I am not being paid. And that's, uh, oh, I mean, aside from the people who want to view it early on Patreon. But all those links can be found down below in the description, as well as pinned in the main comment, as well as my outro music, my intro music, and stuff like that, as well as my band, too. We've got, we got something else coming out soon. Anyways, thank you for watching, please subscribe, and get ready to go to hell with me. Welcome, welcome to Tier 1. I hope you brought snacks. No, really, man, I'm kind of hungry. So let's do it right away and get the easiest topic out of the way. Easy like my mom. Uh, it's pretty much just, simply put, gore tubers. Now, now I know what you're thinking. But Moth, you can't go plugging yourself and other YouTubers in an iceberg video. Watch me, bitch. But honestly, it is worth noting that not only just my channel, but plenty of other great channels like mine have been putting out this kind of disturbing content for everybody to see for quite a long time. So much so that we actually have developed like our own kind of like niche subgenre, if you will, of commentary, like gore commentary and like, you know, extreme true crime. And I think that's really interesting. Black metal of commentary. 
it's a really dark area of commentary, if you will. So creators like myself and Cold Raven's Nest and stuff, we are quite literally like kings of gore right now. I myself taking the gore god title just to be an asshole to people who want to cry pillars of salt for me. And I say that wearing a cardigan and a bathroom t-shirt with half my hair fucking purple. So, I mean... I know that makes a lot of people out there insecure, and I'm glad it does. Really honorable mentions here would be Bad House and Disturbin, but, I mean, in our own right now, and I'm not saying any of them, I'm not trying to, like, call people out and stuff, there's a lot of copycats, it's really funny, but you want to know something interesting, though? We're obviously not the first people to do this, and there are some channels I'd like to bring up, and nonetheless, I feel they deserve credit on here, and exploring everyone's content, it categorizes as a not safe for life topic. We're coming onto a public YouTube platform where you can watch kittens, and I'm sitting here talking about people getting their heads cut off and shit. I mean, people go over some real dark stuff. Some of these channels, uh are hardworking channels that you never even heard about probably and that are inactive as of now basically but i wanted to share them for legacy's sake and like i said give credit where credit is due also a special shout out to like cinema's underbelly too and uh unbox watch and reviewed i mean both have covered extremely disturbing topics and uh i don't think i've ever really mentioned them in my show my show i could use one of those Brutality Will Rule 666 and Marina Graves were among the best gore YouTubers just before I got started a little over a year ago. And honestly, they barely broke 5k at the time. And it's really bizarre given the popularity of gore now. And I may be mistaken, but I believe it was the disturbing movie Iceberg Wendigo did that really brought this into the forefront. And then a bunch of misinformation and lies from Reddit made it even more twisted. That's really spiral out of control. But now I feel that a lot of people are more... Um, snooty about it if you will so the facts are easier to put out there well they should be and also just the re just to clear something here i don't got like a problem with wendigoon i think people think i do like i give them little jokes in here and stuff it's kind of like a tribute because there's a lot of contrast comparison between us and i think it's cool um the reason i didn't mention him in like the gore tuber category is because he's not he does cover disturbing content he covers amazing content and he but he does not focus his content on gore true crime and death it, it's a bunch of different things a lot of mysteries and a lot of different kinds of icebergs so I, I feel that people lump him together with everybody because of one iceberg and he's made so much better content since then so i mean that's just my thoughts but i i felt like i needed to clear that up because i got this vibe like people have approached me over some weird conversations about this and it's like no i actually don't feel youtube is like a competitive thing so and like I said at the beginning of this, if you watch my little thing that I, I had another disclaimer and stuff, a lot of people, again, including myself, do not make money off YouTube simply because we cannot because of our content. Even basic true crime channels have a real hard time. So if not me, consider other content creators as well and supporting their extra projects and stuff on Patreon because not only are you getting extra stuff, you're helping the artist out. And yes, we're all artists in our own right doing this. Videography is art. Commentary is kind of like word art. I mean, it's wordplay, right? But that's pretty much this. This clears up this part of the iceberg. I wanted to bring it up because, one, it's a little bit of a shout-out to people, as well as just credit where credit is due, and it's just obvious. Our content's not safe for life, man. You may be numb to it by now. You may be a fucking edgelord, but... Man, the reactions to Tier 1 and 2 were like tears. I am, I'm scared for the deeper recordings now. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Now we move on to something that for me personally is not safe for life, and it definitely affected me as a kid, and I want to know in the comments if this fucked anybody else up too. So I was a 90s kid through and through, and I actually own this on VHS. It's, it's weird how times have changed. But as a kid, I ate up Pokemon, Digimon, and like Monster Rancher and Dragon Ball Z. Like her significant other eats up my content. Like it was... You know, if you grew up in that generation, media was fucking awesome. And it's not just a nostalgia bias. It genuinely was pretty damn cool. And among all the franchises that came out during that time, especially uh, through people who were in, like, the public school systems as well, were made aware of Goosebumps. And I fucking love Goosebumps. And no, I mean, it's just, like, it was cool. It was so fucking cool because it was, like, an edgier horror kind of content, but it was still directed towards kids. And with an audience directed towards kids, a lot of it was mediocre and corny, uh, but sometimes you get something like this. Goosebumps has been a children's phenomenon since 1992 when the books were first published, and 
honestly, it just the series details more extreme views on childhood fears, typically like Halloween masks or don't go into the basement. Things that are really, really simple. Uh, until you get to things that involve peeling your skin off. Yeah, this is some Junji Ito type kind of shit, but not quite. It, it, it gets weird. So this was a time before internet, at least for me. I mean, there was dial-up and shit back then, but I did not have internet access. I wasn't aware of things unless I saw them in stores pretty much and shit like that. So I was a fan of the slow pace of the VHS uh, version of the Werewolf of Fever Swamp. So it was a slow-paced, like, creepy werewolf horror thing. And it was pretty good for what it was, I have to say. I mean, it's a kid's thing. Um... So when I got a chance to pick up Werewolf Skin on VHS, I thought I was in for the same kind of ride, just like a sequel, right? I mean, there's sequels to plenty of other Goosebumps stories. I basically thought of it the same way. So I fucking saw it, and I cried. And I cried every time my brother would try to put that shit on, and it scared the ever-living piss out of me. And I'm going to tell you why. So a brief view of what we have, Werewolf Skin centers around a teen named Alex Hunter, which is a real corny fucking name for a photographer, but whatever. He comes to Wolf Creek to stay with his aunt and uncle, who also happen to be professional photographers. You know, cool, strong plot point. Anyway, basically they told him the trope of, don't go to the house next door. Naturally, Alex, an artist, says fuck that and eventually ends up hearing howling from the neighbor's home. And I mean, my first instinct would not be to interrupt my neighbors as they do the horizontal monster mash. But Alex was determined to get some photos. Actually, in hindsight, Alex was kind of a fucking creep. But basically, it ends up playing up the suspense by having him realize that he forgot his camera, hearing spooky stuff in the woods, and while getting it only to return to notice paw prints leading to the neighbor's house, and somehow this convoluted werewolf lore gets poured in haphazardly, but eventually Alex followed his neighbors, who were in fact werewolves to their home, and witnessed this shit. <laughs> Mind you, this was TVY7 uh, in the U.S., meaning it was suitable for kids over the age of seven. Why? This shit's like a Nine Inch Nails video. It's fucking weird, and it's creepy. And honestly, still watching it as an adult, I'm like, what the fuck? Why? Why was... Who, who made that decision? Like, why? Even with the context of removing werewolf skin, this shit is not safe for life as hell, especially for a child audience, and it's kind of fucking graphic and haunting, like it's overall disturbing for a child to witness, and it most certainly rustled my jimmies. Even as an adult, like I said, I'm questioning the PR team that said, yeah, let's have this weird, like, almost sexual, like, skin-peeling fucking nightmare-inducing scene here. Let's just set the vibe. Uh, let's crank it up from, like, ah, oh, Halloween masks are talking and floating to they're peeling off their skin next door. For me, like I said, it's extremely disturbing. I felt like it deserved a little bit of a shout-out. I've never heard anybody mention their, like, terror to this, so maybe I'm just the fucking weenie they got fucked up by this, or maybe it's obscure enough to just go over, like, childhood trauma media, but this is, should definitely be considered for any future, like, childhood trauma icebergs, and just take a look at Goosebumps as a whole. People like to go to, um... Are you afraid of the dark? And that almost made it to tier one until I remembered this shit. And honestly, nothing I've seen besides the intro to Are You Afraid of the Dark has ever matched this. <laughs> but that's it for this one. Let's go further down. Well, not even down. We're kind of going to the side here. Let's go to the next topic. I like how I keep pointing towards the direction when everything is actually going to be over here. And that it's real bueno. Don't worry, it's nothing fun. It's literally watermelon carbonated water. Mm. Sadness in a can. It's actually pretty good. So this next one is actually a viral short from 05 or 06. And we're going to watch it as I've actually never seen it in its entirety. I just have seen brief snippets of it. Went to go download it and called it a day. So let's dive in real quick. <sighs> Oh, you bet your ass we're going to watch some beheadings with these Peppa Pig headphones, too. All right.
All right, let's see. Here it is. Oh. Anthem. It's that part that gets me. She red. Me after like my third round at a freaking triple way. Me after twenty dollars of Taco Bell to myself. You know that's a really big spoon. It's not even the fire and stuff, it's like the raw, like, analog sounds, I think, that really mess me up with these kind of things. Oh, we're going back in? Oh, okay, I could have went without seeing that happen. There is nothing. There is nothing. Yeah. Dining rumor, there is nothing. Why the fuck? Ugh, okay. Well, tell you what, um, it's fucking creepy. It's creepy. And of course, you know, we're starting off soft, guys. You know, there's a little foreplay to the hell below. But this, to me, um, seeing the snippets of it, I was kind of scared back then to watch it, not gonna lie. Rustled my jimmies. I was around on YouTube back during the hunting for Leatherface and Bigfoot in San Andreas days, so I know jump scares, okay? So when I saw this shit, I was like, hell no. Heard those analog sounds about poop my diaper. It was bad. That's right, a grown man just told you he almost pooped his diaper. Was he really wearing one? Yeah, I literally went there. Uh, my kids. <laughs> it turns out, though, this is actually made by a French artist named B David B. Earl, and was uploaded to his YouTube account for reasons unknown, most likely because he's fucking French, and, you know, the perception of art within substance is scary as shit, so I don't know. A neat touch of things was the description of the video that says to go to the link for information, but it's nothing. It's a blank page. Get it? So for some reason, this video also went around his living room where there is nothing. Um, I don't know why. I did not know that. But yeah, I found the original. And why is it here? Like I said, it's only tier one, baby. Calm down. It's going to be good. But even going into the source code of um, the website, like the whole blank page and stuff, I pull, I tried pulling a Muda with like my shitty knowledge of like HTML, even though that's CSS, I know. But anyway, there's nothing in there. It's a basic web page. There's no secret messages or links or any weird creepy stuff it's not like a rabbit hole to go down it's literally just a creepy art project but again like it's here because it's it made my asshole clench tighter than fighting cynthia in the pokemon league okay it, it, your boy is a pokemon master and all but that that boss fight was like sweaty hands butt clenching you know there, there's no time for to take a shit like it's bad in all seriousness, though, this video just kind of triggers anxiety with its unnerving robotic effects, as well as it makes all the more unnatural, disturbing, just ambience to it. It almost looks further aged than what it actually is. Not to mention, with everything being on fire and someone seemingly unnoticed in front of you, uh, I'm sorry, that seemingly does not notice in front of you, it automatically triggers a sense of panic within you inherently because fire, danger, like humans know this. And so all together, it has a nice little psychological tinge to it that really just is unnerving. And I feel that that's why it belongs here where it is. But there's more to see. This was probably, the sh I want to say, the shortest entry on this iceberg, but I felt that it needed credit. Also, keep in mind that this came out 15 years ago when, like, YouTube and stuff was really young. And just seeing this, especially without having any contacts or just having this sent to you. Like, if your friend sent this to you at literally 2 in the morning or 3 a.m. no clickbait type shit. I, I mean, that'd be pretty damn scary. I've seen some pretty scary chain mail even in my day. Oh my god, we should dive into that sometime. That'd be funny. Anyway, let's move on. So here's one that's going to make you uncomfy. World Corp has been a thorn in my side for as many, uh, just for a long time for many reasons, but the whole fascination never really hit for me when it was popular. Why? Because it felt fucking off. The allegation is that at least two videos posted to their website and even the YouTube at one point were made using cut child exploitation material. So of course it fell off, but that's not what I mean. I'm about to do something that I'd never thought I would, but I'm going to point out some BS from like Mudahar, Nexpo, and Scare Theater, and it's nothing personal towards them, but I mean, 
knowing what you know when you make certain videos at the time, we all have a little bit of misinfo spread, I feel, in this kind of uh, commentary, uh, including myself with various different things, including the Shuabi Aslam video, and I probably mispronounced his name, but I removed that video recently because it, I didn't even know it was still unlisted. To be honest, I don't really check my analytics too much anymore, but it, it was over a 400,000 viewed video, and I, I feel really bad. There's an update video coming up on this, and actually we'll dive into that a little bit further as we go down the iceberg, but we're here talking about World Corp, and, you know, all their videos, all of them, literally all of them are fake, okay? There's no cut CSEM. There's none of that. And how do I know this? Simply put, correspondence between me and World Corp has revealed how they made their shit, and literally it was the little brother of another group, and it was an edgy marketing stunt. It was something that they made a poor decision on, and they're really trying to move away from, and they get really, really upset, apparently, when content creators like myself, at least with a large audience, can actually, you know, just spew out this misinformation based on other people's videos. And if you really even look at my Roll Court videos, I'll be perfectly honest from you, with you. From my perspective, it's almost like I'm rinsing and repeating what other people have said, and it's really, we don't know. And it's spooky. And that's not fair, and it's true. These videos are fake as fuck. Wow, but what if? It's like, but they're not. They're not fucking real. They're not, okay? Just because Mudahar went to a paywalled front page to a pedophilia website that confirmed some random anonymous 4chan post that literally, I'm not saying he put it there or something, but I'm saying that people go on 4chan and say dumb shit all the time. It doesn't make it true. The entirety of the X board is a bunch of basement dwellers typically role-playing about summoning succubi. So, I mean, are we really doing this? Basically, it was a bad publicity stunt that worked out really well at first, though, until it garnered the real bad attention for what it was. And the reason that World Corp is still releasing videos and releasing content and releasing you know albums and progressing, and these videos can still be found uncensored on YouTube, is simply because they're not real. There's a couple things that look very real on YouTube. In fact, there's actually some real shit on YouTube, too, that's real bad. But it's because of that. It's just not real. While it is extremely disturbing, I feel that the video, um, Each Day I Grow Some More, is worth noting because I can show it to you here. Now, fatherhood, because it emulates abuse, can be removed from YouTube and can cause problems. Now, that is something, a whole other topic. Now, do I think it's morally right and we should laugh at it and fucking whatever? No, it's actually a really disturbing thing for even for someone to make as a hoax or anything. That's fucking appalling, and it's extremely believable. But one thing you should know about certain things like this is material like that wouldn't be done just for like an audio two-pixel thing. Like, these sick fucks want to see things, and they will. There is content like that out there, absolutely, and you'll know more about this as we go down the iceberg. But simply put, World Corp is a, it was an arc tied into a music group with a bad publicity stunt. And unfortunately, a lot of content creators, including myself, are guilty of sensationalizing this just based on misinformation and what we know at the time of making our videos and just a high demand. And that's not cool. It's not cool for anybody, really. Uh, it's not really a dishonesty as much as it is just kind of like, all right, well, we're going to make this video. We know this much. Let's, uh, let's, in the end, we're just going to end up saying we don't know because we don't. Well, now you know. It's not real. At the time, though, oh boy, that shit looked real. Holy fuck. It just never really, it's just, I don't know, just this vibe I got, got of it. It just, I don't know. Well, now you know. So basically, why is this on the iceberg then? Because in concept, these videos are fucking terrifying. And I mean like bad, especially if you have went through childhood trauma yourself. So I will say that this part may be a little freaky for you, but it's not as bad as the fatherhood video. This is the Each Day I Grow Some More video. Oh no. Someone's going to be in there bitching about how I'm, like, exploiting CSEM now, watch, even though it's fucking fake. Should have called Scare Theater, like, ten years ago when he did that, oh. Uh. That's a good apple. But was it a good apple? Oop, oh, oh, see, spooky. Oh, found footage. Oh, shit. Oh, God, he's in the back rooms. <laughs> Okay, so that is distorted Obey the Walrus video, uh, the Goddess Bunny. Or not. 
I can't really tell because of the distortion. It kind of looks like it. it looks like what? Oh no, it's just spooky. Like literally, I don't understand how this was even passed along as that. Like it seems like for a while anybody would just take a spooky clip and then just run with it as the bother get dark wild yeah children. It's not always like that. And that was it. You know, I don't think that was it. Hmm. It's probably best that I don't have the whole thing. Uh, maybe I'm even mixing my videos up. Regardless, they're all fake. It will. I saw that. Holy shit, hair went wild. <laughs> but at one point, uh, someone's screaming the Caillou theme song at a kid, allegedly, and that's that's how it's spooky. And yes, in essence, in concept, and watching things like that, it's fucking terrifying. Especially if you know you find out, oh my god, that's cut from what. I could give the same kind of uh, perspective to you on something too if I made some shitty, like, art project. Really, I could tell you it's from anywhere, and then it, it would be so scary, wouldn't it? Well, no, I mean, it was a bad publicity stunt. And part of, I was actually kind of happy to put this video on here because I wanted to talk about that and debunk World Corp a little better and not take it out into another video because I'm so burnt out on it. It's so dumb. I get messages like every week about it too. But let's move on to something a little more disturbing, huh? Now again, technically this is like 99%, like I'm sure this is fake. But it is not safe for likes. Like? It's not safe for likes. It's not safe for life. And I want you to know, though, this did creep me the fuck out quite a bit back in the day. Because, like, it was originally uploaded to YouTube. And, you know, seeing it and not knowing the context is really spooky. <laughs> it was originally uploaded to YouTube by an account called Chabonk182. And simply titled Kayang Deok. Now, in 2011, this was peak horror content. This was spooky as shit. Everybody now is just like, man, why has he got a big ass forehead? But it's, <laughs> but the Kayong is a spirit native to Asian folklore and is said to be a woman's floating head trailed by her attached intestines and other various organs dripping and, uh, what the hell does this have? What does this being do other than just be weird as shit? Like what? Okay. So I'm just reading about it and it says the kayong is a spirit originating in indonesian folklore a spirit in the form of a human head with just its inner organs attached to it that flies to look for babies the baby's blood or women's blood after giving birth oh that's a fucking fun fear to put in the new mothers just like right after they give birth for no fucking reason at all during the day the kayong lives her life as an ordinary person and she usually wears a robe usually Ooh. What happens if you get, like, really flirtatious with a Kayang and she just disrobes? There's someone in my audience that'd be like, I would do it. <laughs> it's fucking gross. <laughs> At night, the Kayang will fly to look for baby's blood or childbirth's blood to be sucked as means of increasing the strength of her knowledge. What in the Bill Nye is that? So in that transition, you may have noticed that I have changed from the Bathory shirt to the cardigan, and that's because sometimes content creators record on different days because of real-life situations or whatever. Well, today is a grungy, scary day, or a sludgy day, if you will, so now I have a flannel and an I Hate God shirt. So back to the Kayong de Yak, though, it's, um, it's something else as far as folklore goes. I'll say that much. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> People who see the flying Kayong usually see it like a big bird. That's from an article I pulled that from. Uh, basically, just the common uh, perception of it is it basically just looks like a big bird in the sky. Uh, that's kind of vague and stupid, though, I have to say, especially for how this thing is described. So you wonder how to handle it like how do you how do you uh how do you stop this creature to deal with this creature the victim needs to use a broom or other household furniture such as pots or pans to smash the kayang away so the too long didn't read here is that if you see a disembodied head flying at you with its poop tube swaying at the wind like a fucking cape you beat the shit out of it with the nearest object and that's typically how you handle these kind of things it's pretty solid advice and no one else probably would have thought about it i have to say so i'm very glad that that is deeply and richly embedded in folklore why it's like 
it's like Japan too. Like, I mean, it's <sighs> look up Japanese demons and stuff. I swear to you, they have one for everything. There's shit for like teapots. There's one for like your brother who farts too loud or something. There's a lot of them, and it's really weird. I mean. I kind of wish America was that cool, though, because, like, what do we got? We got, like, well, there, there's the big ape in the forest. His name's Skaskich. And uh, then you got the, uh, what's, that, what's, that, what's, that, what's that, Chupa Libre or whatever. Oh, what, that's not ours. Like, see, like, there ain't shit here. Whatever. It's like, I like cryptid stuff, but I guess I'm going off track here. So let's just see if this thing is real, right? Like, it's totally got to be real. We're going to go ahead and watch the clip now. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to give my opinion on it now uh, from a modern perspective. Oh, boy. Oops. It looks like a dachshund with the head of, like, Reagan from The Exorcist, uh, I swear. But seeing this when I was younger did kind of freak me out. Hey, hey. Like, but for real, what? You see, everything back then, too, was potato quality. So it was really hard to... I mean, obviously it's fake. But what if, right? But I mean, it, looking at this back then was definitely spooky. And again, out of context and everything. Like, for the unfortunate people that thought this was real, <laughs> uh, including myself, which at the time gave a probability, I basically believed everything at the time, especially anything spooky. This is some this is some scary shit. This is like I think when I first saw this clip, it was labeled under like unknown human experiment in Romania or something like that, and I'm like, why? You know, I thought that shit was real, and that's because I'm an idiot. But over well, you know, looking at it from the um, knowing the folklore though, now it doesn't look so much like a human head on a dog as much as it does like the Kayang Deok or the the Kayang. I'm sorry, would actually look like I guess. There's, like, no audio here. It's either that or it's a weird black metal promo. I mean, that makeup... Ooh, oh, boy. Like, you could see that. Like, you could tell it's some cheap foundation or something or cream-based white with, like, lipstick. How do I know this? I'm a black metal man. Of course I role-play to myself in the mirror and go, like, ah! You know, that kind of shit. Anyway... That was the lens cap. Don't tell Andrea I dropped the lens cap. She'll fucking kill me. So why did I put it on here? Like I said, we're going in easy and it, just out of context. If you had no dialogue to this video and you were just sent it back in 2000, what was it, 2011? 2011. Even if you knew that was fake, it would still be a little fucking creepy. And for a lot of people, especially younger people, um, how old was I back then? Like, how old am I now? Like 130-something? Oh, shit. My dumb ass would have been, like, 16. Oh. Did I really think that was real? I have a recollection of thinking, oh, my God, that could be real. Man, you know what, though? You grow every year, and I may have been a dumb teenager. But nonetheless, I feel that it serves a spot, at least on Tier 1, for just the whole fucking unsettling nature of it. And then, who knows? I mean, you can't prove it's fucking fake. What if that is a Kayang? I mean, do you have one? Do you have proof it's not one? It's totally like a fucking puppet, like, gimmick thing. But, hey, it's still creepy. But let's move on to something that is a little more disturbing than that. So we're moving on to things that actually involve the dead, just a little bit. So just, like, just so we're getting into the gritty here and you understand that so far... I get it. It may not have been so not safe for life for many of you watching, and it's really just a matter of perspective and opinion. And I chose these for tier one because they basically just trigger anxiety or disturbing. They're disturbing more on a mental level rather than just outright shocking. So, I mean, well, some of them at least. So just keep in mind and remember this is tier one and it gets really bad starting on tier two in my opinion. But moving on, we have grave robbing from morons, and this was asked of me for a long time on my channel, and I just kind of was uninterested. I know I've known what it is for a very long time, 
But I figured we should give credit where credit is due and understand that, again, this is another case of when this was released or when this was more or less found, and then the mystery surrounding it is already pretty not safe for life, especially given the context of the video. On this, on this big, all right, if it's a male, you might have lines like that from the, from the baldness, okay? Now, so what you do is you grab it around here. Grab it here and peel it back like that, okay? Peel it back, all right, and then it'll pull off. It'll make a disgusting sound. Um, so let's say it's some someone important, right? All right, so you, uh, so you take a sample of the uh, see that mustache, right? Okay, so you... Also, I mean, you're probably desensitized from gore, my channel, by now anyway. I mean, a lot of this may not hit right for you until we get to the lower tiers, but just give us some patience. It's build-up, it's suspense, you know, it's the thrill of the ride. But grave robbing for morons allegedly appeared amidst the trade of the VHSs and all the other bootlegs and shit in the 1990s. And yes, the 1990s underground for trading VHSs and tapes and everything was a very real thing, and... I kind of wish I could have been part of that, at least with the music scene back then. That would have been really cool. But it it's like they did it with international demos and stuff like that. But even Gore had an underground trade. Probably since the, I think honestly, since the 70s and 80s even. Because um, there's shit for like fetish porn. And we'll talk about that messed up shit too. Even though, I mean, to me it's pretty tame. Any, anything like fetish porn related is pretty tame to me. But the video details a young man and his friends discussing the profitability and the fun of robbing graves. And he even diddles a human skull for a little while. He's all like, eww. Gets his fingers in all the dirty skulls. Gets his fingers in there and everything, man. But throughout the video, the young man kind of struggles to, like, speak. Like, he's got a speech impediment. Like, I stutter a bit, too. So I'm not going to, like, ride his ass for that. It's kind of mean. But it is just something to note because some we don't know who this guy is. That he's never been identified and people have tried this has been a long like ongoing mystery for shit like what 20 years because if this came up like i think this came up in the early 2000s it's down here i'll know in just a minute but i'm getting ahead of myself on the script it's interesting to talk about because of that alone and the fact that given the time frame like people have put the clues together as to like what year this may have taken place especially with the degradation of the video plus by the way i mean like i i struggle to read my own script so i mean I, I definitely can't make fun of this guy to make sure that uh, i'm so authentic or you take that dentures and you make sure they're with them so that way the person knows who this person is all right all right because sometimes sometimes you you go and you risk your ass looking for somebody all right and somebody might be paying some serious money for it so you have to make sure it's the real thing, okay? And, and they have to make sure it's the real thing. So you have, so you have to bring some kind of um, proof that it's the real thing. So you bring a piece of hair, preferably from the, from the longest part. And, you know, um, so let's say they have a, a mustache, you bring that definitely, all right? If the person had a mustache when they died, then you, then you bring it. It's usually around here, all right? Sometimes you might find it around the jaw. It might be left there. Okay, so when you, uh, so when you, uh, so when you, uh, so when you bring out the jaw, so I'll show you later. I'm in the real, um, um, coffin itself. It's a little, it's a bit. The video is believed to have been recorded sometime in the late 80s or very early 90s, and a young man actually nearly gives out his name, like Anthony Cass. Like he stops there, Anthony Cass. Okay, this was made by uh, by Anthony. Yes, uh, um, well, as a matter of fact, let's forget the last name. It's Anthony and Gino, okay? This is made by us, too. Um, we worked hard. Um, also, Bucci, Bucci and Daco, I'm um, also helped it, uh, at the very beginning. Me and um, Gino first opened it up, though. All right, we opened it up. We broke it open, but the other guys helped out a lot. So it could be like Cassidy, it could be like Casserole, I don't fucking know. But he stops, and this sparked a fascination with it for many, many years, and with the tape itself. And 
the video, a VHS copy of the film Evil Dead 2 is sitting on the table nearby, and that wasn't published until 1987, and I'm far from the first one to point that shit out. That's just a little bit of trivia that I know from it that I remember from watching some fucking documentary a long time ago. But, but again, no one's ever identified anybody in the video, especially the guy who's the main focus of it, so... It's it's a stageable thing, but there's a lot of theories here. Uh, one of them being it's just an edgy stunt to seem cool after being inspired by the Faces of Death series, which was extremely popular at the time. But there are concerning little details here that I would like to point out that makes me think that it's more genuine. You know, you know. First off, the guy's dirty as fuck, and while that's stageable, but the video just kind of has a tone to it that's just a little bit too real and edgy, I guess that. This fucking dork and his friends just could act through for 30 minutes straight. I just kind of don't feel like no... I kind of feel like nobody wouldn't be able to contain themselves. Or somebody wouldn't be able to contain themselves. I'm sorry, I'm misspeaking. I feel like somebody would have just busted out laughing or act like some sort of fucking asshole. Because he talks about some really corny shit like, Oh, you gotta get laid and stuff like that first. It's fucking stupid. And... Another thing, too, is the details on the bones. Uh, he pulls out, like, a f fucked up, like, leg bone or something. I, I don't know. I am not the very best with all that shit. I am not a skeleton. But it, the skull and everything, it would be kind of difficult to reproduce such an authentic-looking prop at the time without a significant amount of money, especially if it took place in the 80s. Like, and I know that sounds, well, well I'm not. How do you know? It, it would be. It's pretty. Real bones look different, okay? You think. I mean, many of you probably do know, but a lot of people think they know something like that until they actually fucking see it, including in real life. And he speaks with a pop, uh, possible New York-type accent. I mean, I, I I don't know. I mean, I imagine grave robbing in New York to be very difficult, but, I mean, I don't know shit about grave robbing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, other than a little bit of historical facts about it. Another theory of it being a hoax goes that they actually used as much authentic shit that they could get from the time period, including an old camcorder, but I just kind of don't believe that. This seems like a total fucking Reddit stunt. Someone would be like, I made grave robbing for morons, AMA. It seems like one of those kind of things. It really does, if it were to be that way. And so far, no. No one's trying to fucking claim they can't, they're they part of this, and it, that makes me more convinced, I guess. You know, there are a few theories as to who he is, but before we get into that, I would like to talk about... Uh, uh, a few comments our boy Anthony made during the video. And, you know, first off, he does indeed say some edgy shit that you could easily dismiss. Like I said, like, go get laid and don't get drunk while you do it. And, you know, we all know that you, if you're going to rob a grave, getting laid comes afterwards. Ain't nothing like cracking open a cold one when you get home. But our proto-redditor here also mentioned how he would sell the bones to magic shops and you know people dismissed that part now if it were authentic okay let's say it's authentic it it took place in like 1988 for fuck's sake okay let's just say that back then you know things were a little different especially if you weren't a practicing metaphysical stuff like you know your astrologer girls that are, have become like a fucking meme now that is was a lot different, and that was stigmatized way heavier due to the satanic panic. So, I mean, it really wouldn't surprise me if he was being serious, if he was legit selling fucking bones. I mean, it, you can get shut off Etsy now, but, like, back then, it it's a lot different. And it was even a lot different just a few years ago to obtain different items, even black candles. So, I mean, that part's kind of believable, actually, at least to me. My favorite theory about who he is, though, actually comes from Ricky Casso, who is also known as the Acid King, which is a really good doom metal band. You should look that up. Ricky Casso was a serial, well, not a serial killer. He was a teenage killer from upstate New York. Like I said, nicknamed the Acid King because he did a lot of acid. And one day while doing acid and I believe mescaline, he killed a friend in the woods and he actually brought multiple people back to the body after bragging about it and they didn't believe him and he just showed it off eventually he got snitched on and ended up hanging himself in jail and some people believe that there is like a connection like he was inspired the guy in gray robbing from morons was inspired by this story because if you talk about it if you look into the case of it there are similarities to what he said and what ricky castle actually did but I think I want to cover Ricky Casso, actually, in a different video entirely. But as far as grave robbing from morons, it's unclear if the mystery of who and why this all happened will ever be solved. 
but it is for sure. It is not safe for life. I know we're desensitized by now, but a lot of people will get fucked up by grave robbing. And I mean, you're desecrating a grave is fucking, it's kind of spooky. But like I said, tier one, but let's keep going. Well, we're here. Yeah. One Guy, One Jar is arguably the most popular shock video right now, even though it dropped like a hot cookie sheet back in like 2008. And, you know, the video was like many spun around with a lot of misconception. You know, there's a lot of stories as to why, why, how, and who it was for, you know, if it was sent to Grandma Janine or not. And it doesn't matter um, because there's a simple story to it. It's pretty clear cut. And... Oh, man. <laughs> what a video. Now, there is actually an interview um, with the man himself, actually. Best Gore did a thing on that, and uh, I'm not going to go too deep into it. There's something else I would like to share with you about this video, and we'll go into the history of why and what it is and stuff, because I'm sure, you know, you're asking yourself, maybe, if you don't know what this is, like, oh, Moth, what is one guy, one jar? Well... If you're a fan of my channel and you don't know what that is, this may or may not mess you up. Well, the story goes, a man with questionable choices in life squats over an empty pickle jar and proceeds to put it into his rectum with pure Eastern European energy. Like, literally, no one else is doing this shit. I'm looking at you, Russia and Ukraine. Like, for real. What happens next is legendary, as the jar shatters inside of his booty hole and a soupy sludge of blood and feces and broken glass shards falls to the floor. And he picks them up from his sliced up asshole. And what you may not know is that, that part of that was an accident, okay? So the shattering was an accident, okay? He didn't mean to do that, but this motherfucker went to work. He went to work and didn't even go to the doctor because he was embarrassed. He said it took a couple weeks to heal. Can you imagine shitting? I don't want to imagine shitting after that. That is fucking horrible. But so who was this guy and why did he do it? Okay, it's pretty simple. His name was Alexei Tatarov, and he actually just did it pretty much to just explore his butthole. Like, he just, uh, he just, he just wanted to shove things in his butt. I mean, it's pretty much what it is. And he, like I said, I don't want to go into the full, I like, almost said the full iceberg, the full interview with Best Gore he did, but there are other videos he did where things didn't break in his butt. Um, I want to explore the one guy one jar IMDB page for you and yes it exists. We're going to we're going to do that. We're going to do that. So I will admit that I did look at this um a little bit and I just think it's great so you can see Alexei Tatarov here uh, archive footage. It's listed <laughs> as a <laughs> It's listed as a short an adult horror short. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. All right. Two minutes long, yep. Um, all cast and crew. Yep. Uh, Alexei Tatarov, right, right, all right. Plot and summary. All right, storyline. A brave man decides <laughs> decides anally, inserts a jar into himself for an unknown reason, and thus the inevitable occurs. User reviews. Here we go. Pretty damn good movie. You need a strong stomach for this one. This is one for the family and friends to see. Watch it every Christmas year. Can't go one Xmas without seeing a man break a pickle jar inside of his asshole. A must-see. <laughs> An Academy Award winner best score scene. Oh, boy. Uh, that, who gives a shit about that part? Um. Oh, my God. This is great. There's a parental guide. Oh, boy. <laughs> this, is a, this is satire, folks. You shouldn't be under 18 watching this anyway. No nudity, highly recommend for the... <laughs> no. Severe profanity. Well, no, there is no profanity, and there is no alcohol, drugs, or smoking. A glass jar breaks, and he bleeds from his rectum. A puddle of blood is seen. It looks soupy, sludgy, so I, I don't know, man. Frightening and intense scenes. This man literally shoved the glass jar up his rectum, and it breaks. <laughs> He starts to pull the glass out of him, and as he bleeds from his rectum dripping on the floor. I love reading the word rectum out loud repeatedly. This is wonderful. It's just weird. 
yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what it is. I just got a kick out of the fact that there's a fucking IMDb page for it, but it's a shock video, and that's pretty much it, self-explanatory. You should know the meme by now, and if you haven't seen the video yet, it's not the worst thing ever, but it's pretty fucking gross, and it's definitely not safe for life for some. I don't, uh, definitely don't recommend showing it to friends and family. Uh, you may have an issue with grandma at uh, Thanksgiving or something, but yeah, let's uh, let's move on. But uh, let's uh, let's watch it. Let's uh, let's watch this together. I, I just don't understand what part of this looked like it'd be a good idea. And uh, it's gonna do it. It's gonna do it. I mean, of course it's gonna do it. But I can't believe he. Damn! You know what? I didn't even watch this in a long time. Oh no! I just can't believe he actually got that far up before that happened. I like how he said, too, I think in the interview it didn't hurt that bad. There's no way. All the watermark's gonna cover a lot of the blood. I like he just... He just doesn't fucking care. He's just in there. Ew. You know, he cut his fingers up. He had to look. Yeah. What about the risk of an infection and shit? I don't know. I'm not into, um... I don't see a whole lot of butt gore, to be honest with you. It's not something I really go to look for. Man, I'm a, I'm a regular, um... Poet there. I don't even really have enough jokes for this. Like, this is just weird as it's on its own. And uh, I'm glad we could share this moment together as we watch a, um, a certified classic. This is a long video. Yeah, never mind. I remember why I made this not safe for life. It was mostly the tile floor. That was in an old house I used to live in. Uh, maybe that's me. That's not me. But guess where he's from? I believe it was Russia. What'd I say? You guys are fucking wild, man. Yeah, there's a lot of goop and blood. Like, how do you know you get it all out? Because you know you, like, break glass. It, there's always, like, tiny, tiny shards. Like, that's horrible. And like I said, oh, God, can you imagine getting a shit after that? Like, he's still going. That's a lot of bleeding in the the booty though too that's also dangerous like real bad like you can bleed out that way i mean we're gonna talk about that one on tier two uh, someone bleeding out because of uh booty injuries um i swear to you this is longer than the original oh no it's not he's just getting up it's just a few seconds longer than the two minutes quoted but yeah that's all it's what it is it's a gross video uh definitely not one not one i enjoy um, but it's also one I'm, like, basically numb to at this point. Uh, I... It, it's always talked about. Now, now. I know, I know. It's been pretty weak so far to you guys. You know, not so not safe for life, if you will. I mean, args, grave robbing, guys shoving things up their butt. It's not that extreme, right? Well, someone dies this time. But not on camera. However, the CCTV evidence in the Missy Bevers murder case, to me, is still worthy of a spot here on Tier 1 of our iceberg. Why? It's chilling and fascinating. And here's why. She arrived via the front entrance and just before 4 a.m., and from what we know, she began her day as you would expect. However, she was unaware that someone else was already there in the church nearly an hour prior to her arrival, in full police tactical gear. What was caught on security footage makes my ass cheeks just clench up a bit like I just fucking sucked on a lemon because it's just I don't know it just does it for me whoever this person was and I'm just gonna assume a guy I mean just for dialogue's sake but the reality is no one actually knows this is an unsolved murder case and it's about five years cold now this guy tried every door calmly searching for Missy as he strolled through the halls quietly in the empty church and he eventually found the room she was in and well he beat her to death uh, her wounds were consistent to being bludgeoned to death with a claw hammer so, yeah, use your imagination to that shit. It was an extremely violent death, and her wounds, like I said, were consistent with a claw hammer, and she did attempt to fight back. And why is this here? Why is this so not safe for life? Is because what I'm literally telling you is, in silence, you get to watch the buildup for this lady literally being just destroyed by a hammer. She felt everything and suffered immensely. But it gets worse. As this person literally chose the best getup for the crime, the only thing police have to go on is that the person walks differently. 
their gait. Yes, they can literally analyze and identify people by the way they walk. And that's something really fucking weird, but everybody, I guess, has like a thumbprint-like walk. You know, it's unique to you. But just after 5 a.m., Dolores, Grandma Betty, and probably Wendigoon and others arrive to the fitness class in the church to find the brutalized body of Missy Bevers. And the rest is uh, history, if you will, at this point. No weapon or trace of the murder were ever found except for some broken glass. And yes, it's a hammer murder, basically. Easily could have put the three guys want hammer video on here, but like I said, it's just fucking creepy. The raw evidence of it makes it not safe for life for me. It's haunting as shit. Stephen King said this, and I don't have a quote on hand, but basically it's like he intentionally leaves certain things for the reader to imagine themselves because you're best suited to your imagination to visualize certain things. And when you're, you apply that kind of logic to something like this, I mean, at least in my mind, it makes it more scary. I have a way more visceral, scary-ass image of what happened to her in my head than maybe some other people do. But that's how it is for me. And yes, I mean, it's my iceberg, my opinion, bro. Not to mention that the eerie silence of CCTV is just haunting in itself. Like, any actual, like, real heavy gore video that's done like that, it's just, it's just bad. Like, it's just really bad. And the CCTV is freaking freaky, simply put. But it's scary as shit because you know what happens. You can't hear her screams. You can't see it. You can't hear the slams of the hammer breaking into bone and flesh. And you can't see it. But you know it's going to happen. And it did. And that's why it's here. And it just gave... The whole case has always given me the vibes of just, like, malice in it. It's creepy. Like, this person knew her. Police kind of, like, labeled it as a robbery gone wrong. But it... Mm -mm, her wedding ring was on her. I could crack this fucking case myself. <laughs> I mean... A robber is not going to do this. They're not going to plan this well for one person in a fucking church. And they definitely wouldn't just go for a murder, a straight up murder, for like a couple hundred bucks at best. Nobody's carrying like millions of dollars in cash on them. So whoever killed her knew her. That's a fact. But let's go deeper, shall we? Since I have the Porsche girl simps upset, I figured I should get into the untapped market of Bianca Devon simps. I'm halfway kidding, but this case is honestly just extremely disturbing on its own because of its simplistic route of commonality found in day-to-day -day negative social dynamics, so it's kind of like that. Before we get into this, you should know I will say things how I want to say them and how they are, so I may hurt some feelings here, but I should uh, actually guarantee you that you'll have your eyes open. So I did cover this case before, but I found out more information, and now I understand why this case is blowing up again, because I didn't really look into it, but out of nowhere, it just kind of came up. But it started in the summer of 2019, Bianca Devins was just 17 years old, and rather successful with her Instagram following. This garnered the attention of a lot of nasty people, as you can imagine. I mean, shit, anybody, male, female, gets some pretty weird motherfuckers contacting you. Sorry, but some of you are pretty fucking weird. For some reason, though, Bianca thought, you know what I should do? roll a fucking d20 and pick the first psycho that gets into my dms and i mean that's just what it seems to be i mean that may be insensitive but i mean i just don't understand the logic here and safety especially being a, a fucking a, a female like as a as a lady i would not just meet up with strange dudes especially ones like that look at this motherfucker no his name's brandon and he's, he, this is him. I mean, come the fuck on. Sorry to any Brandons out there, but if you're Brandon and you look like this, then change some things, okay? It's a red flag. For reasons unknown, though, she and Brandon Clark got to hanging out in real life, and this was back in April of 2019, and Bianca made it clear that she did not want a relationship with Brandon. But, I mean, this is the type of guy that fucking pours his boxed wine into a Mountain Dew bottle and then calculates his karma and his fucking reddit gold and shit and whatever else. I mean, this is the kind of person we're dealing with. And now, granted, while the social media and everything else, I mean, even myself in my past video made to uh, like title claims like the incel killer... Is that actually the case? And it's sort of true, because, I mean, while on one hand, he obviously was a fucking, like, predator and murdered someone just for, like, his own weird-ass fucking reasons. There really isn't a reason. The police tell a story of their intimate relationship gone wrong, however. So either that was a thing, an open thing, or Brandon Clark pulling a Jimmy where, like, you know, 50 no's and a yes means yes. I mean, it could be something like that. But it's still up in the air. But what happened next after the concert? Yes, they went to a concert together. Brandon and Bianca and another male friend, uh, 
return to Utica. And at some point, Brandon and Bianca ended up alone. And the story goes, they ended up arguing over Bianca kissing Alex, the male friend who they attended the concert with, and Brandon snapped, killing her. Because of Brandon posting them himself, photos of her body uh, surfaced, and his weird, like, channeling his best Elliot Roger were just circulating wildly over Instagram and other things, even getting to her friends and family really quick. And the rest is history, basically. Like, he's in jail right now. But why did I say, is he really an incel? Because this is why it's blowing up again, apparently. Now, whether I missed this before or this is real, real recent, I mean, from the articles I've been reading, this is pretty recent news. Um, apparently, he was not an incel because we never talked exactly how Brandon killed Bianca, did we? No, we didn't. And this makes it even more not safe for life, so I'm not even going to fucking try to justify why this is here. Our subreddit monitor here set up a camera in his car, recorded them having consensual sex, and then he pulls the knife and slits her throat. Now, I have not seen this, and I'm unsure if it's actually out there, but I do know from reading that it is illegal, so don't go looking for it. She was 17 at the time, therefore, federally, the video is CP, and of course, it's murder. Uh, very two unsettling things to combine, and definitely um, do not condone looking for it. So how did that actually get out there, and how do we know this? It's actually because the New York DA fucking leaked the video to the press. They basically, I mean, they presumably sold it. I don't know. I, I actually don't know for sure. But somehow that happened, and it leaked online, allegedly. And this is, um, this was recent to my knowledge. And while Brandon may not be an incel, he's still a predator, a murderer, and a worthless sack of shit. And he's in prison, rightfully so. So it was originally not safe for life just because of the grotesque nature of it and the weird circulation of everything and just how it all went down. But now we know this and it makes it even worse because he planned it and there's basically no reason for it. If he did that out of jealousy, that's uh, that's literally insane. But um, let's move on to the last part of Tier 1, shall we? We're going to move on to some white-collar crime scary shit. And this one is not graphic, uh, no one dies, no accidents, but it's a terrifying reality that happens all around you all the time. And while this shit may be happening to you right now, you don't even know. And um, this is not an ad read. This is not clickbait at 3 a.m. This is like a real thing, and hear me out here. Identity theft it, it, like can affect anybody, and you don't really know the full scope of it until it actually happens to you. And even a small uh, transaction financially can really fuck you over for months at a time, let alone someone actually like stealing your identity and just ruining your credit. I swear I'm not giving an ad rate, I'm just building the suspense daddy. But there's a massive market for stolen identities on the dark web, and not just your credit. I mean, everything, from your social security number to your address. And... When all this information is posted, that's called doxing, you know, and that's illegal in itself. I mean, getting this information illegally is bad. It's already scary and illegal, but you may not even know, you know, until your assets are frozen, until you can't use your cards anymore, until you're in debt, you, don't, you didn't even know, and then you have to try to prove your case, and it's, it's hell, and usually expensive. You may even have trouble getting a tax return or a fucking job, but what if it could mean your literal life? Think about it. Now, while there hasn't been a case of someone actually being tracked and murdered on the dark web randomly, it isn't impossible because there's a lot of dumps of people's information, their private information. And if somebody has your information, they most certainly have your family's information. So think about that. If you get your information leaked out there, it's up for anybody. All those people that are on the dark web for nefarious and possibly illegal reasons could see it. So think about that. Think about somebody who does want to kill somebody. Think about somebody who wants to kill you. Think about all that. I mean, it's a very scary thing. And of course, it's just theoretical. But at the same time, it is it? And another thing, too, is that's real. Like, there are pe there are dumps of people's information. There's uh, things where you could buy illegal credit cards, allegedly, and things like that. So information is one of the most profitable sources of information. Uh, income for large companies as well as corrupt individuals i mean think about it think of all the legal shit tiktok went through for selling data or facebook you know you sell that information to advertisers that's still your privacy invaded but given that information and giving it to someone who actually does have malicious intent violent intention that's one of the scariest things i think i've thought of doing this and it's only on tier one and to me that's why it's here it's a not safe for life thought but it's also reality just because we haven't heard of it happening doesn't mean it hasn't happened, or it doesn't mean it just hasn't happened yet. 
Now, like I said, there's never been a case of somebody actually being just randomly tracked down and killed via the deep web. That's pure clickbait shit. That's not real. But like I said, too, it's not impossible. Many other content creators have dove into Tor and found identity dumps before. And one thing I have also learned doing this over the past year is that when you think you've hit the bottom, you've really only scratched the surface on the evil shit that's out there in the world and <laughs> the shit people do. It's really disgusting, honestly. So rule 666 of the internet. If you can think of it, or it exists, there's most likely gore of it. Or another haunting reality is, there will be. It's a short entry here, but it's a good way to cap off this uh, level of the iceberg because it's a reality that is incredibly disturbing, and it's a scary thought of peace of mind disturbed by something minute as like a PayPal purchase or up to the extremes of a home invasion. You don't know. So use a VPN and be safe with your information. Because are you safe in your home when people know where you are and want to harm you? Scary thought your home is the safest place to be right so for this part uh, assuming that i am doing separate tiers on the iceberg thank you for watching and thank you for joining me today please check out the links in the description if you're not already a patron and you can also get those pinned down in the comment below as long uh, along with my other social media but i'm plagued moth thank you for joining me on the most disturbing iceberg out there the ultimate not safe for life iceberg and i look forward to seeing you on tier two oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah.